Praise the Lord. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. I want to introduce the speaker for today. And he's a father, a spiritual father to the move of the willing women worldwide, an anointed teacher. He is an evangelist, a poet, and a prolific writer. His ministry is a blessing to many people around the world. He oversees the High Calling Outreach, and he has a literature evangelism ministry. Praise the Lord. 
May I introduce Dr. Steve Ogan to take us on this message. Praise the Lord. We want to appreciate the Lord for another opportunity we have to share fellowship. As you have been told, our subject for today is Balm of Gilead in the season of redemption. Balm of Gilead in the season of redemption. Now we are at a difficult time globally. People are hurting, people are mourning, and some are astonished as to the things that have happened, not just to them, but to those around them. This astonishment has taken hold of leaders. The astonishment has taken hold of men, of women, of children. That's where we are now globally. Statistically, as at today, as at this time, there are 12 million people, 12.6 million to be more specific people, 12.6 million people that are carrying the virus that has turned into a global pandemic, 12.6 million. A total number of 563,910 people have died. So many families are hurting. Many families are mourning. For America alone, the total number of people that have died as at the time I'm speaking is 136,720 people that have died. I know the number of people in Africa that ha have died because of this pandemic is still relatively small. But 11, 1,100,000 people is still a large number. So as we speak, we need to understand what God is saying to those that are hurting. I have not seen people die the way I have seen them die. I have not seen people astonished the way they have been astonished. And if you turn to the left, people are mourning. You turn to the right, people are mourning. There's really a family that doesn't have one problem or the other. It is in this kind of scenario that Jeremiah raised a lamentation some years ago. The lamentation Jeremiah raised, and the wailing women will understand Jeremiah because the core scripture that defines what the wailing women do, what the facilitators do, and what every other unit within the wailing women company do has to do with lamentation for the church lamentation for the nation. But at this time, even within the company of the wailing women, there is a lamentation that is not just vicarious for others. There is a lamentation that has been raised from within. And so in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20 to 22, in a season of hurting, in a season of mourning, in a season when astonishment took hold of the nation of Israel, Jeremiah raised the lamentation. That lamentation was to the effect that the harvest is past and we are not saved. The harvest is past. The summer is ended and we are not saved. Jeremiah 20, uh, 20, chapter 8, verse 21 goes on to say, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, for the hurt of the daughter of my people, I am hurt. I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold of me. Jeremiah vicariously was putting himself in the place of feeling what the people were feeling. He felt what they felt. So he said, for the hurt of the daughters of my people, I am hurting. 
for the mourning of the daughter of my people who are mourning. I also, I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold of me, just as astonishment has taken hold of them. And then in verse 22, he says, is there no balm in Gilead? That's a rhetorical question. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician in Gilead? Why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? There are three rhetorical questions that Jeremiah asks. And those three rhetorical questions are very vital for us to also ask and answer if we must appropriate the balm of Gilead. With the hurting, with the pain, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician who can administer the balm in Gilead? If there is a balm in Gilead, if there's a physician in Gilead who can help to heal our hurt, who can help to assuage our mourning, who can take away our astonishment, why then is there no recovery? Why is there no recovery for the health of the daughter of my people? For an answer, and that answer is vital for anybody that is believing God to receive healing today. For an answer, there is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead. Say it to yourself, there is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead. Listen, a balm is a cream used to heal the sick. A balm is a cream that is used to heal the sick. A balm is a liquid for soothing cracked skin. A balm is a liquid for soothing cracked skin. A balm is a rare perfume that is medicinal. So three things about a balm. It's a cream that is used to heal the sick. A balm is a liquid for soothing skin that has been cracked. A balm is a rare perfume that is medicinal. It's not just about the aroma of the balm, but it is medicinal. And in one context, a balm is a universal cure for all ailments, particularly the balm of Gilead. Gilead is a location in Israel, and the balm of Gilead is noted as a universal cure for all ailments. So to answer our question in this season of difficulty, to answer our question in this season of hurt, to answer our question in this season of mourning and astonishment, there is a balm in Gilead. Is there no physician? What's our response? There is a physician in Gilead. The physician of Gilead is the rock of our salvation. He is the one that has a universal cure for all ailments. And I mean all ailments. There is a physician, and the physician is the rock of our salvation. The physician is the redeemer of Israel. He is the one that redeemed Israel. He is the one that has the capacity to heal our hearts. He is the one that has punishment. He is the one who is our redeemer of him? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says, In him, in Christ Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And let me tell you, if you can catch a revelation of the physician, if you can catch a revelation of the rock of our salvation, the one who is the redemption of Israel, our redeemer, the one through him we have redemption. In this season, the balm of Gilead will be available, available to help you, available to help me. The physician, the one we are talking about, is the universal cure for all ailments. He is the universal cure for physical sickness. He is the universal cure for emotional trauma. He is the universal cure for famine especially at such a time as this. The rock that we're talking about is the one who is the physician. 
You know, Gilead, I said, is a location in Israel. But the word Gilead means heap of stones, heap of stones. The, the, the word Gilead also means heap of testimonies. So the rock of our salvation, the physician of Gilead is filled with balm. He is filled with the balm. But you see, beyond being filled, we ourselves, as the little rocks, the little stones, we are also filled with his balm. You know, the physician in Gilead is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is a heap of testimonies. And get ready, whatever time is your timeline, get ready for us this afternoon. For those in the US, for those in, in South Africa, those in the West Indies, get ready because the balm of Gilead, the Jehovah Rapha, the one who is a heap of testimonies, he is available this afternoon to heal, is available to renew, is available to restore. But the question is this, if there is a balm in Gilead, the cream used to heal the sick. If there is a balm in Gilead, the liquid for soothing skin that has been cracked or that is not smooth. If there is a balm in Gilead, the rare perfume that is medicinal, not just aromatic, but also having healing qualities. If there is a balm in Gilead, the universal cure for all ailments, whether it is physical, emotional, or mental. If there is a physician in Gilead, the question is, why then is there no recovery for the daughter of my people? Why is there no recovery? Now to understand why there is no recovery and why we need to work with him to bring recovery, we need to understand what the scripture says in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, the scripture tells us, if you diligently heed his voice, if you diligently heed the voice of the physician, if you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put and brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heals you. So the question is this, if there's a physician, if there's a ban, why are we not healed? First is because some of us, many of us do not diligently heed the voice of the Lord. So listen carefully, because as you diligently heed the voice of the Lord in this season, I can assure you, that the balm of Gilead will be available to heal your hurt, to take away mourning, to also bring you to the place where astonishment will become a thing of the past. He says, part of the reason we are unable to appropriate the balm of Gilead is not doing what is right in his sight. And so if there is someone listening, watching, that has something he or she is doing that is not right in his sight, now is the time to understand how to do what is right in his sight. Not giving ear to his commandments. That's part of the reason there is a balm, there is a physician, and yet we are not yet healed. Not keeping all his statutes. Not keeping all his statutes. Now, before the lamentation of Jeremiah, Jeremiah noted the word of the Lord in verse 8, Jeremiah chapter uh, 8, first from verse 7, Jeremiah chapter 8 from verse 7, he said, even the stock, the stock is a bird, in the heavens knows her appointed times. And the turtle dove, the turtle dove is also a bird. And the swift, the swift is also a bird. And the swallow observe the time of their coming but my people do not know the judgment of the Lord. 
My people do not know the time of the Lord. They don't know the judgment of the Lord. So part of the reason that there is a balm in Gilead, there is a physician in Gilead, part of the reason is that the things God created, the stock in the heavens, the turtle dove, the sweep and the swallows, they know his appointed times. They know his appointed time. They observe the time. So for this balm in Gilead to be available to us this afternoon, this morning, for it to be available, we need to know the appointed time. We need to know the time in which we are. Last year, I was in the church of an archbishop back in the East here in our own nation, Nigeria. And the word of the Lord came that 2020 will be a season of redemption. And he asked me a question this year. He said, you said it will be a time of redemption. What's happening with all the pandemic, the death, the pain, the mourning? How could it be a time of redemption? I told him that redemption is the act of recovering what is lost. So you can't talk of redemption without recovering what is lost. Redemption is buying back something that was sold. You can't talk about redemption without buying back something sold. In other words, included in the message of redemption is the need for the bound of Gilead. That's where we are. And that bound is available. It's available to bring redemption. So knowing the appointed time, oh, May God help you to know the appointed time. Sometimes when we don't know the appointed time, we do things that are stupid, things that affect us. I can't forget the story of a young boy who took an exam. The exam was actually tough. When the results came out, he just heard from others who took the exam with him that several people failed. And because the exam was tough, and now he's hearing several people fail. He had not seen his own result. He said, how then do I survive? The exam was tough. I knew it. Several people are here now failed. So what's the point of living? And so he tied a rope to a ceiling fan, and he hung himself. But when the results came out, among those that passed, he was on top of the class of those that passed. Meanwhile, he had died. You see, even the stock, even the things that God created, they know the times. They know the appointed times. But he said, my people, my people do not know the times. Listen to me. I know there is pain everywhere. I know there is lack everywhere. But I can assure you that this is the season of redemption. This is your season of healing. This is your season of coming out of hurt. Usually, the principle of John 10.10 10 must apply to our understanding how the balm of Gilead flows. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But God has come to give life and to give it more abundantly. So in the season that the enemy comes to steal, in the season the enemy comes to kill and to destroy, that's when God comes to give life and to give it more abundantly. The reason we are not healed, the reason our hurts have not been removed, is not because there's no balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician in Gilead. But my people do not know the appointed times. My people do not observe the times. Knowing something is one thing. Observing it is another. Look at several individuals who knew and who observed the appointed time for the release of the balm of Gilead. Particularly, the appointed times of the 20th year, which we are now. The first is Deborah. Oh, Deborah did not just appropriate the balm of Gilead in the 20th year season. She knew that she was a carrier of the balm of Gilead. 
just as Jeremiah knew, he was also a carrier of the band of Gilead. Israel had been in bondage to Jabin. We are told in Judges chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, Judges chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, that Jabin had about 900 chariots of iron, and he had oppressed Israel harshly. Judges chapter 4, verse 3 to 4. Let me read verse 3. It says, And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had 900 chariots of iron, and for 20 years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Verse 4 says, Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, was judging Israel at that time. So she arose as the one carrying the balm of Gilead in the 20th year. And by her ministry in that season, the heart of Israel was healed. The astonishment of Israel that was in harsh oppression came to an end. So the balm of Gilead is not just available. The physician is available, but our hands are the extension of the hand of the physician. And so in the season, we are told, in the 20th year season of Deborah's uh, rulership, dominion mandate, village life had ceased until I, Deborah, arose. I arose as a mother in Israel because it was a season for the outpouring of the balm. The balm of Gilead is available at all times. But there's a particular season of redemption when that balm overflows. And I will tell you now, as I will do later, that each of us, we are carriers of the balm of Gilead. Each of us, we are extensions of the hand of the physician. All I'd like you to know is that we are in the season of redemption. How about Jacob? Jacob served Laban for 20 years. In those 20 years, Laban changed his wages 10 times. So it was a time of loss for him. Raising a lamentation at the time that he ran away from Jacob uh, for Laban's employment, Jacob was pursued by Laban. And when he met him, hear what Jacob said to Laban in Genesis chapter 31, verse 38 to 39. Genesis chapter 31, verse 38 to 39. Jacob said to Laban, these 20 years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats did not miscarry their young, and I have not eaten of the rams from your flock. That which was torn by beasts, I did not bring to you. I bore the loss. You required it at my hand. But you see, for 20 years, it was a time of loss for him, supposedly. But in the 20th year, God came to him and said to him, the appointed time of redemption has come. I don't care what is happening globally. I don't care what is happening in the area of Satan's attempt to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I will believe in the report of the Lord. I will believe what God says. You know, in Isaiah, God asks, who has believed the report of the Lord? So whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? I will believe the report of the Lord. How about Ruth? Ruth's case is peculiar to many things that many of our sisters are going through in the area of losses, deaths, and then an astonishment that comes by reason of seeming hopelessness. Ruth was a Moabite. Now, her father-in-law, Elimelech, had taken the family from the house of bread, Bethlehem, to Moab, the house of worldliness. And there, Ruth and Naomi experienced losses. The first thing that happened was that Elimelech died. And then Naomi also lost her two sons, Chilion and Malon. And these were the husbands of two women, Ruth and Oprah. It was a time of loss. But fortunately, fortunately, the word of the Lord came to Naomi. And the Lord said to Naomi, 
God has visited his people. God has visited his people. So arise, go back. Go back to Bethlehem. And Ruth decided to go because she understood the appointed time. She understood the appointed time. And amazingly, Ruth's appointed time of visitation is her own appointed time of visitation. Her mother-in-law said, I'm going back. And she said, I'm going with you. The mother tried to dissuade her and her sister-in-law. Oprah went back, but Ruth will not go back. I like you to know there is a bound And if you follow, if you understand, if you know what you're going through, there's healing, there's restoration, there's revival, there's redemption available to you. When Naomi could not convince Ruth to go back, Ruth said a word. And that is the word of those who will follow the statutes of the Lord, who will observe his commandments in order to appropriate the bound of Gilead. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and verse 17, Ruth said to the mother-in-law, Entreat me not to leave you or to stop from following after you. For where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. And where you are buried, I'll be buried. And God do so to me, if anything but death separates me and you. For all those that will appropriate the bounding Gilead, for all those that will, because they know the appointed time, because they observe the time, that means they do what the Lord wants them to do. The words of Ruth give us seven principles of appropriating the bound of Gilead. Whether you have lost a one, a husband, a child, whether your business has been incapacitated, whether you are astonished, by the confusion around you. Seven principles that you need to take note of from Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. First principle, where you go, I will go. Movement, go where God is going. Don't be so astonished that you are incapacitated. Don't be so astonished that you lose hope. Move wherever God is moving. Ensure that you are moving. Don't remain stagnant. Ruth was willing to go with the mother, where you go and I will go. There is a wind that is blowing. Ride on the wings of the wind, no matter your situation, your, no matter your circumstance, ride on the wings of the wind. Go wherever God is going. Listen to the promptings of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit himself. He will tell you where the wind is blowing. Ride on the wings of the wind. Movement, movement. Life is a movement. It's not a monument. Don't stay where you are. Even if things are good for you, move from good to that which is better. Even if things are better for you, move from better to best, from glory to glory. Move. Move in your mind. Do not stay there thinking, I have lost everything. Yes, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Ruth didn't sit back and say, well, I've lost my father-in-law. I have lost my husband. I have lost the brother-in-law. No, she said, where you go, I will go. And she knew that Naomi was going to the birthplace of the Redeemer, the physician himself. There is a physician in Gilead. There is a physician in Bethlehem. So I'm going wherever the physician is. And so she moved. He said, where you lodge, I will lodge. Habitation. Habitation. And your habitation in this season must be in the presence of God. He says, God inhabits the praises of his people in his presence. So let your habitation be in his presence. 
Let your habitation be in the place of praise. The most difficult time to sing is when there are challenges around you. But sing all the same. Swim against the currents, the currents, the COVID currents, the current of famine, the current of sickness, the current of emotional trauma. Swim against it. If you don't know how to raise the song, get a CD, play a CD, and sing along. Sing even when you don't feel like singing. Where you go, I will go. Movement. Where you lodge, I will lodge. And notice God inhabits the praises of his people in his presence. It's, she said, your people shall be my people. Your people shall be my people. Do you know that was naturalization? That was change of citizenship. In other words, maybe you're listening to me. Your citizenship is still on earth. Your citizenship is not in heaven. Notice, the physician is a heavenly personality. And you need to change citizenship. Except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom. He cannot enter the kingdom. Where you go, I will go, movement. Where you lodge, I will lodge, habitation. Your people shall be my people. Citizenship. You know, on the physical level, she was doing naturalization, moving from being a Moabitess to a Jewish. But spiritually, she was changing citizenship to the dwelling place of the Redeemer himself. She said, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. That's conversion, conversion. Once upon a time, I worshiped the gods of Moab, but now I will worship the Redeemer. I will worship the physician, the balm of Gilead, the universal solution to all problems. So there was conversion. You see, Unless we are converted in our heart, the balm will not be available to you. The physician cannot work for you. Remember what he said in Exodus chapter 15. If you will diligently, diligently, diligently follow me. Do what I say you should do. I will not allow the sicknesses I have put on the Egyptians to be upon you. In other words, there is need for Several things. Move to where God is moving. Lodge where God is lodging. Change your citizenship to a heavenly citizenship. Change your worship. Worship God. Let there be a conversion. And then she said, where you die, I will die. Where you die, I will die. Now listen, this death is not just physical death for us. You know, in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, Christ that lives in me. The life I live now, I live by faith in him who loved me and died for me. And I was died to self, died to self, died to self, get to the place where you understand the scripture, that unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, and dies, it abides alone. In other words, when I die to the flesh, the emotions of the flesh, when I die to those emotions, I produce more fruit. I know some of the people that have hurt us are people we loved. People who hurt us, who wounded us. People we helped, and somehow mysteriously, they are pushed out of, a, out of a relationship. Once upon a time, they said to us, I can't do without you. That's why they married you or got married to you. Now the same people have hurt you, notwithstanding what you have done for them. Yes, die to the hurt, die to serve, because out of that debt, you will produce more fruit. Out of that debt, you will produce more fruit. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As much as lie within you, live peaceably with all men. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Declare to yourself, I am crucified with Christ. When he died, I died. And so the seed of redemption is born out of my crucifixion. 
And it is important to understand that the balm will flow as you begin to understand. Know the appointed time. That is, it's your season of redemption. Observe the protocols of the time. Observe the protocol of the time. Do the things that you ought to do. Then she said, where you're buried, I will be buried. Burial. You see, burial in our context is symbolic of baptism. When you are baptized by a martial, it's symbolic of recognizing the death, the burial, and when you're brought out, the resurrection. Where you are now is not where you will remain. If the spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit shall quicken your mortal bodies. In other words, you will not remain here. There's an end to problem. There is an end to problem. Jeremiah is asking, is there no bam in Gilead? There's a bam in Gilead. Is there no physician? There is a physician. Where, why therefore are we not healed? Yes, we will be healed when we understand the protocols of the balm of Gilead and the protocols of the physician of Gilead when we follow his pattern. In other words, where you die, I will die. Where you are buried, I will be buried. But knowing that out of that barrier, there will be a resurrection. And then she said something in Ruth chapter 1, verse 17. God do so to me if anything but death separates me and you. In other words, that's a self-imposed cause. Seven principles, if we must appropriate the bound of Gilead. Where you go, I will go movement. Where you lodge, I will lodge habitation. Your people shall be my people, citizenship. Your God shall be my God, conversion. Where you die, I will die. That is death by crucifixion. Where you are buried, I'll be buried. That's baptism by reason of a nation. Not just from the physical point of view, but from the physical point of view of believing that in the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You, that spirit shall quicken your mortal body. So you too shall be raised from whatever situation you find yourself. And guess what happened? The balm of Gilead visited the root. In Ruth chapter 2, verse 2, she said to her mother-in-law, let me go to the field and glean ears of corn from one in whom I will find favor. And the Lord directed her steps to the, the farm of the man who is a symbol of the, the balm of Gilead, a symbol of the physician of Gilead who asks himself. The mystery and the relevance of what I'm saying is this. When you read the book of Ruth as I did some time ago, I saw something amazing. I got to a point that the Lord said to me, count the number of times that Boaz is mentioned in the book of Ruth. So I took my pen and started marking one, two, three. By the time I got to chapter four, I noticed that Boaz is mentioned only 20 times because he's the king's man redeemer. He is a symbol of the balm of Gilead. He's a symbol of the physician of Gilead. He's a symbol of the one who is the redeemer himself. And notice, when she met him, her life changed immediately. The woman who lost a husband, the woman who lost a father-in-law and a brother-in-law, had an opportunity to remarry. Had an opportunity to remarry. And out of that marriage, we're told that Obed was born. Now, Obed is the father of Jesse. Jesse is the father of David. And Jesus is the son of David. So out of ashes, beauty came out. And I prophesy to you, out of your ashes, beauty will also rise. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. All things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to your purpose. You are weeping now. You're hurting now. But the day of joy is coming. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. The dark night of pain will not last forever. There is a daybreak for somebody in the horizon. Hold on to the daybreak. Hold on to the daybreak, especially in this season of the 20th year, especially at this time, at this time 
of the fourth month. Now notice there are many other examples. I don't have the time to go into all of it, but I'd like you to notice something. Why is it that there's no, there's no healing? To answer that question and to help us to get out of those reasons, in the season that God changed the name of jo Jacob to Israel, in the season he wrestled with the Redeemer himself, and he was transformed in that 28th season. In that same season, Rachel, his wife, did not appropriate the balm of Gilead. Her husband appropriated the balm of Gilead. He was delivered from slavish labor at the hand of his uncle in the 20th year. He was delivered from, from attack when Laban wanted to come and take him back into slavish labor. He was delivered from 400 armed soldiers that his brother Esau, whom he had treated 20 years ago, was coming. He was delivered. There was a balm for him. But why was there no balm for the wife? Genesis chapter 35, verse 16 to 19 tells us that as Jacob and his family were going from Bethel to Bethlehem, the house of bread, that labor came for Rachel. Rachel was pregnant, and she had had labor. That scripture says, then they journeyed from Bethel, and when they were a little way to Ephrata, that is Bethlehem, the house of bread, Rachel labored in childbirth, and she had had labor. Now it came to pass, when she had had labor, that the midwife said to her, you will have this child also. Don't be afraid, because her soul was departing, for she died. And she called the name of the boy Benoni. But thank God, the husband was nearby as she was delivering, and he called him Benjamin. Why was the ban available? Not appropriated by rich of the Lord not doing what he's giving ear to his commandment and not keeping to his uh, statute. Over the years, she had learned to disobey the Lord. When she wanted a child, rather than going to the one who is the balm of Gilead, the physician of physicians, she said to her husband, give me children or else I die. Self-imposed curse. Don't impose a curse upon yourself when there's a balm to give you healing. The day she was living with her husband, she left her father's house with her husband. She took her father's idol. In other words, she stole her father's idol. Stealing something good is bad. But stealing something that is bad is taking stealing to another level. I say it again. Stealing something good is bad. But stealing an idol, something bad, is taking stealing to another level. And so idolatry. Don't defeat yourself in this season. Don't defeat yourself. And notice several other things. When her father came into her tent to look for his idol, she sat down rather than standing up to honor the father, dishonoring her father. And when the father asked, why are you not standing up to acknowledge my presence? She said, the manner of women is with me. In other words, I'm in my menstrual circle, lying. And she lied because the idol the father was looking for was under her brutals. So she polluted the gate of reproduction, the place of birth. At no time does a woman need the balm of Gilead, the physician of Gilead, than at the time of delivery. But she polluted the gate of reproduction. When she and her husband got to Bethel, her husband made a call in Genesis chapter 35, verse 1 to 5. All those with idols, submit your idols. Because we have come to Bethel, the house of the Lord, the place of the Redeemer. There's no evidence that she submitted her idols. So she rejected an opportunity to, to repent in the house of the Lord. These were the baggages she carried when she needed the balm of Gilead. These were the baggages she carried when she needed the physician at the point of delivery. And notice, Hebrew women were never supposed to have hard labor. Before the nurses come, the midwives come, they deliver. Here was a Hebrew woman who had hard labor because she did not take heed to the words of the Lord. She did not appropriate the times and seasons of her visitation. Don't be like Rachel. 
I like to close by letting us know that we must activate the balm of Gilead by knowing the appointed times. We are at the appointed time of redemption. Whatever you have lost shall be recovered. But interestingly, we are not just at the appointed time of redemption. We are at the time of the fourth month of the Bible. The fourth month of the Bible is where we are back. Today is the 19th day of the fourth month of the Bible. Notice, the lamentation of Jeremiah was the stalk. They swallows, they know the appointed time, but my people don't know the appointed time. Because they don't know the appointed time, they cannot appropriate the balm of Gilead. They cannot appropriate the work of the physicians. Before I came to this meeting, I went to my village. I went because there's a covenant the village entered into during the Nigerian Civil War. What was the covenant? The covenant was to the effect that Lord, we will serve you. We will keep no idol altars. Every member of this community will serve you. Just do not allow anybody in the village to die. The Organ village is, was the epicenter of the world because the refinery that gives Nigeria resources is located close to the village. So the Nigerian airplanes were constantly coming to bomb. So on a daily basis, Bullets were constantly flying. In the night season, you will see the trail of the bullets. So several people were supposed to die in that village because it was close to the epicenter of the war. But because the village had a covenant with the God who is the balm of Gilead, the God who is the physician of Gilead, not one person died during the civil war from the village. So every year, we go to commemorate the covenant. I just let the people, and we commemorate the covenant in the fourth month. So knowing the appointed time, observing the times will bring a cure. The stock, the turtle dove, the swallows, they know the appointed time. They observe the appointed time. And notice, part of the reason the balm of Gilead will flow at this time is because it is an appointed time for the balm to flow. Every fourth month, Everything that God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, to purify, and to promote whatever is precious. And I'd like you to know that you're precious. Your family is precious. And in this season of the fourth month, there's a release of the balm of Gilead to protect, to preserve, and to purify and promote whatever is precious in God's sight. Listen, Ezekiel. In the fourth month, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, it was the fourth month. It was the fifth day of the fourth month. And Ezekiel was by the river Sheba. The Bible says that the heavens were opened. Get ready. The heavens will be open to you in this season. When the heavens are open, you receive signals as how to get out of the hurt, how to get out of mourning. The heavens were open. He saw the vision of God. In this season that God is releasing a bomb, may you see the vision of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to him expressly, and God's hand was upon him. It was the fourth month, and four things happened. Can I tell you, the balm of Gilead is already inside you. Don't just look to me to appropriate the balm of Gilead. The balm of Gilead is in the world, but the balm of Gilead is already inside you. And there's no better time to activate the balm of Gilead inside you than in this season of the fourth month. You remember, four rivers came out of Eden. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to 14. Four rivers came out of Eden. The first river is called Pishon. The second river is called Gihon. The third river is called Hedekel. And the fourth river is called Euphrates. Now, all those rivers are inside you. Now, it was from those rivers that God molded the earth. He molded the earth and then breathed into the earth he molded. He molded man, rather, and then breathed into man, and man became a living soul. So Adam was molded, and you can't mold earth. 
without water. Psalm 87 verse 7 says, all God's springs are inside you. So all those rivers with which Adam was made, all those rivers with which the earth was molded, and Adam became a living soul when God breathed into him, all those rivers are inside you. So in this season of hurting, in this season of mourning, activate the rivers inside you. The Bible says on the last day of the feast, Jesus cried out and he said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. And he spoke of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spring of healing, is the spring of restoration, is the spring of redemption. And so that spring is inside you. And practically now showing us how to activate the band of Gilead. The first spring inside you, because the word of God says, all my springs are inside you. Out of your inner man shall flow rivers of living water. So you're not looking for restoration externally. It's already inside you. And there's no better season to activate those four rivers inside you than in this fourth month, this fourth month of Tammuz. What is the first river inside you you need to activate? It is part of the balm of Gilead. It is freedom of you. As I speak, activate that river of freedom. Whatever has bound you, whatever has incarcerated you, whatever has led to hurt, let that river flow now from within you because the river of liberty is inside you. The second river is Gihon. Gihon means bursting forth, bursting forth. It's the river of energy. It's the river of energy. Some people are actually tired as I speak. Some are tired of their circumstance. Some are tired of life. Some are anxious. But there is a river inside you, the river of energy. You notice something about the bathroom. I've said it many times. The bathroom is an altar. Anytime you enter the altar and you're tired and you put on the tap and the water comes, what do you do? There's refreshment. That's physical. But it has a spiritual implication. Inside you is the river of energy. So don't get tired. There's a balm that will restore your energy. Activate it even now. Out of your inner man shall flow rivers of energy. Listen to me. Many times I am ill. I know there's a river. It's part of the balm of Gilead. Remember, a balm is not just a cream. It is a liquid. It's inside me already. And I activate it by reason of the word of God. Combined with faith in the spirit of God, I activate. And sickness disappears. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of liberty, freedom. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of energy. Gaihon, bursting forth. Even as I speak, that river is bursting forth to re-energize you, to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. I declare to you that the enemy will not dominate you. You will dominate the enemy in this season. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of rapid result. Rapid result. That is the river Hedikel. It means rapid result. Yes. A quick work I will do in the end time. That's what the word of the Lord says. Don't, don't worry about the losses. He will do a quick work. I can't forget a lady who for more than 20 years of marriage, she didn't have a child. 20 years of marriage. Some of her friends that got married before her had four children, five children, and she kept on believing God and thank God for her husband. Her husband kept faith with her. In fact, her husband was even stronger than her. In the season she was hurting, in the season she was mourning, in the season's astonishment came over her, it was her husband that encouraged her. Don't worry, I didn't get married to you because of a child. But <laughs> even if I don't have a child, I'm satisfied with you. But I know that God will give us a child. If this is sickness, barrenness, Fruitfulness will come through you. I will carry your child as well as my child. That was the encouragement she had. And guess what? 
in the 20th year, she became pregnant. And when she delivered, she delivered four children at a go, quadruples, quadruples. In other words, what others spent 20 or more years to do, God gave her in one year. That's rapid result. Get ready. Your losses will be restored. The years that the canker worm has eaten, God will overturn. A quick work I will do in the end time, says the Lord. So don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. You are neither a living dog nor are you a dead lion. You are made in the image of God. You carry the likeness of God. You have a dominion mandate to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, and to exercise dominion. Don't lose that covenant of creation. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of rapid result. Listen, last year, I write books. Last year, I said there is a river inside me, it's the river of rapid result. But I like to do something I have not done for a long time, something that I have never done before. Give me the grace to write the volume of books in a short time that I haven't done. My target was 20 books in one year. I did 21. It was by the river of rapid result. The walls of Jerusalem were broken down for 140 years. But Nehemiah, whose ministry actually came in the 20th year, Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1, Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 1. In the 20th year, Nehemiah repaired in 52 days what was spoiled in 140 years. So don't just get out of his presence to do something stupid to yourself. No, in this season, he will do a quick walk in your life. The things you have lost, he will restore them. I understand what I'm saying. Out of your inner man shall flow a river of rapid result. So it's up to you to believe the word of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? Whose report? Satan says you're finished. Your own case is finished. Nothing can happen to you. That's a lie. Believe the report of the Lord. To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord is being revealed to you by his word. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of rapid result. Finally, Euphrates. Euphrates means that which makes fruitful. That which makes fruitful. So the river of fruitfulness is already inside you. It is part of the company of the balm of Gilead. And so what is the Lord saying? Jeremiah 46 verse 11. Jeremiah 46 verse 11. Jeremiah 46 verse 11 is our instruction. He said, go up to Gilead. Go up to Gilead. Go up to wherever the balm of Gilead is available. The balm of Gilead is available in his word. Go up to his word. The balm of Gilead is already inside you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so the Spirit of God is symbolic of rivers. And there are four rivers inside you. So go up to Gilead. The presence of God for us now is Gilead. Where you are in your home or in your office is Gilead. And the instruction in Jeremiah 46 verse 11 is a take, take, Take the balm. Take the balm. The word of God is your balm. The spirit of God is your balm. Take the balm. Oh, virgin daughter of Egypt. Interestingly, in the scripture in Jeremiah 8, it was talking about the virgin daughter of Israel. In the scripture in Jeremiah 46 verse 11, the instruction, go up to Gilead, take up the balm, is to the virgin daughter of Egypt, Africans largely. But whether you're African or not, the balm of Gilead is available to you. It says, in vain, you will use many medicines. In vain, you will use many medicines. Any medicine in this season that is not the balm of Gilead may work temporarily. But there is a permanent balm. It is a cream that brings healing. It is, it is a perfume that is medicinal. And that perfume is the one that is universal to bring all manner of healing. He said, in vain, you will use many medicines. You shall not be cured by many medicines. There's one medicine, the medicine of the word of God. And notice something. In this season, as I conclude, we are in the fourth month. 
It's a season for releasing the balm of Gilead. Jeremiah was in prison at this time, the fourth month, in the 11th year of Zedekiah's reign. He was in prison by King Zedekiah and the princes of Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar has surrounded Jerusalem since the ninth year, the tenth year. This was the 11th year, and it was the fourth month. The season of the release of extraordinary grace and notice in that season, everything God created is mandated to protect, to preserve, to purify, and to promote. And notice, Jeremiah gave the longest, the longest, the longest prophecy against Babylon. So if Nebuchadnezzar was coming into the city, he should have caught him. But in the season in which we are, everything God created is mandated to protect, so to promote, to purify, and to preserve whatever is precious. That's the season. Remember, I'm saying this in the context of the lamentation of the balm of Gilead, the stock, the turtle dove, the swallows, they know the appointed time. So understand, this is your appointed time to go up to Gilead. This is your appointed time to take the balm of Gilead. This is your appointed time, not to depend on too many medicines, but to depend on the medicine of medicine, Jehovah Rapha. This is your season. And Jeremiah understood that season, the fourth month season. And notice, when Nehemiah, I mean, when Nebuchadnezzar, rather, came into Babylon, he killed Zedekiah. I mean, he killed the princes of Israel. He took Zedekiah, plucked out his eyes, killed his own sons, the princes. But when he came to Jeremiah, look at what he said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 39. Verse 2 tells us the timing, the fourth month. Verse 11 to verse 12 says, Now Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to, the, to Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of his host. Verse 12 says, they Take him out of prison. Look after him. Do him no harm, but do to him just as he says to you. It was from the fourth month, four things were said to uh, Jeremiah, that he should be taken out of prison. In this season, the appointed time for the release of the balm of Gilead, the appointed time for the great physician to arise, not just in the 20th year, but in the fourth month. Everyone that is incarcerated, the Lord will take you out of prison. Even your enemies will look after you. They will do you no harm, but they will do whatever you tell them to do. They will do whatever you tell them to do. And guess what? Now, whatever you speak is what will happen. They took Jeremiah out of prison. They took care of him. Remember, he was in a dungeon. So he was bruised. He was battered. So they brought healing to him emotionally, physically. They did him no harm, but they did whatever he asked them to do. There is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician in, in, in Gilead. Why are we not healed? Here, we will receive the balm, we will receive the physician, we will also do what the physician wants us to do. We will not lose hope. We will, we will activate faith. And as we activate faith, get ready. All manner of healings will come to you. Physical healing. As I speak, I remind myself, the last time I was in a hospital was when I was 12 years old. It was in the city of Kitwe in Zambia. That's the last time I was in a hospital. From that time to today, the physician himself has healed me. He has, he has graciously healed me. I haven't been to receive that. Receive his word. Receive his mandate. Let me pray for you. Father, as many as are ill, as many as are sick, 
You say, unto them that fear your name, the son of righteousness will arise with healing. And so, Lord, I pray that you will arise with healing in your wings. There is no barrier in the realm of the spirit. So I speak the word of healing to you. By his stripes you were healed. So receive that healing. As many as are discouraged, weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. May your joy come this morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord empower you to receive the balm of Gilead. The Lord keep you, preserve you, preserve you in him, preserve you in his grace. The Lord make his countenance to shine upon you, illuminate your heart, illuminate your mind, give you insight, give you creativity, help you to activate the balm of Gilead that is inside you, that out of your inner man shall flow the river of liberty. And so by the river of liberty, I declare bondage to fear, bondage to darkness, let it be broken now by the river of Gihon inside you. I declare that tiredness, dissipation of energy, let it come to an end because out of your inner man shall flow the river of energy. Let that river of energy bring restoration. Out of your inner man shall flow the river of rapid result. I ask that God will do a quick walk in your life, bring you restoration of joy, restoration of happiness. The people who have laughed are against you or they have laughed they have laughed at you in this season. They will rejoice with you. I end my prayer with Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16 to 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16 to 17, it says, Therefore, all those that devour you shall be devoured. May everything that has devoured you be devoured. All your adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. May all your adversaries, every one of them go into captivity. Those who have plundered you shall become a plunder. And I declare, may all those who have plundered you, may they become a plunder. And all those who prayed upon you, may they be prayed upon by the great physician himself. For I will restore hell to you. Lord, I pray that you will restore hell to them. You say, you will heal them of their wounds, says the Lord. Heal us of emotional wounds. Heal us of physical wounds. Heal us, heal us of wounds that are financial wounds. Heal our economy. Heal us. Heal us. Those that have despised your people, help them to know that the season of restoration has come. Because they called you an outcast, this is Zion, no one seeks you, and this is the people who will seek you. God will restore you. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus Christ's name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. What he has done for us today, the understanding that he has given to us, the fact that we know that the balm of Gilead is inside of us and we can activate it. All we need to do is be in agreement with the greatest physician. And once we are in agreement, we can activate that balm of Gilead. And I tell you, I know that when we live here today, our souls will be healed. We will be refreshed. So I thank God for what he has done for us today. I want us to take a moment of prayer before we go for the interactive session and just um, pray that this word that we have heard, it will not be taken away from us. It will not be like those that heard and the birds of the air came and devoured it. It will not be like those that heard but they did not have root for the words to bear fruit. Neither will they be shocked away by the tons of life. So we want to thank God for the servant that he has used and say, Father, let this word return harvest even in our lives. Father God, we just want to bless you this day. Father, you have done something for us. You have enlightened our eyes of understanding. You have made us to understand that that which we are looking for is right inside of us. All we have to do, Daddy, is agree with you. All we have to do is know how to activate it. Father God, we thank you that today as your daughters and your sons have gathered together 
and sat your, at your feet to hear what you have to say to us in this time and season, that none of us will remain the same. Father, as many as are wounded, as many as are seeking for answers, as many as are going through crisis, be it financial crisis, be it family crisis, family situation, be it marriage situation, be it whatever it may be, health crisis, my father. And it looks to them like the road is foggy and blurry. They cannot find their way. That they know today they have found their way because you are the way, the truth, and the life. Father, we thank you for what you have done in our life, that we will take this word and it will take hold in our lives and it will transform and it will restore and it will bear increase, mighty God. Father, we thank you for the season that we are in, that not only do we have it, we are your hand extended on earth, that you will use us even to bring this balm to others that may be hurting. Father, we just bless you. Bless your servant that you have used. Bless your daughter that gave us such a, a testimony of your faithfulness. Father, you are faithful to your own. You never disappoint. There's never a time, Abba, Father, that we cannot trust in you, our Father. You do not let us down. All the way from Nigeria, you brought her to Canada. Not only did you bring her to Canada, Father, you settled her in Canada. The thing that even the indigents cannot get, Father, you made available to her. That is the God that we serve. Father, we just want to thank you. We bless you. Even as we go to the interactive session, Father, take over. Take absolute control. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, our Father. It is in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. And I want to hand over to our sister, Sister Cynthia to um, take us, um, to announce to us about the interactive. And I just want to please, before we uh, leave, remember that we have our Willing Women Worldwide International Conference. And the date of the conference is from August 2nd to August 8th. Sunday, August 2nd to Saturday, August 8th. I know many may not be able to attend because of the lockdown and because of the ban that many nations have concerning flights going to other nations. But I want you to know that there will be live streaming. So you can join via Facebook, you can join via Zoom, you can join via YouTube. All you have to do, the information and everything that you need is on willingwomenworldwide.org website. Again, the website is willingwomen.org, willingwomenworldwide.org. So you can go in and you can just get all the information that you need to be part of this international conference. It is a conference that you do not want to meet. And I tell you, it is available wherever you are. It doesn't matter your nation. You can join in. Even if you're not physically, you can, be the, you can be in the comfort of your home and be a partaker of what the Lord is doing in this time and season. So please, let us all take advantage of it. Thank you so much. God bless you. As I call my sister, Sister Cynthia Way, to please give us information on the breakout room. God bless you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. We know that you have been blessed by the hearing of our word um, that was shared by Dr. Argon, the praise and worship, the testimony. As we go forward with the next few minutes, we just want to have an opportunity just to give um, those of you that have joined maybe an opportunity to go into some interactive discussions with us. We are um, have, we could have a couple of breakout rooms where you may want to talk a little bit more about what Dr. Argon had talked about, um, share a, a brief word of encouragement that you receive from it, or if you have a need right now and you would just like somebody to just touch and agree with you, um, as you um, look at the screen or see the instructions that may come forth, we just want you to avail yourself to that. So if you have any questions, if you want to say something right now, 
um, we're here to we're here to listen. We're here to hold you up in prayer and just be with you right now with the few minutes that we have remaining. So, um, if there's anyone that has a question or 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 want to share something right now, um, we would ask that um, our facilitation team would make that those instructions available. Okay, so if, if there are any questions, maybe somebody can put up their hand. You can uh, raise your hand or you want to say something, um, kindly raise your hand. We still have Dr. Organ on, um, so he can answer some questions if there are any questions, um, if you need to um, ask him some questions. So um, please, the floor is open. Um, put up your hand. I think there's a um, facility for you to put up your hand to ask a question or to speak. Uh, whichever way. If you've been ministered by the word, by the testimonies, and you have something to share, you know, that would also, could also encourage others that have joined us today. Please go ahead. You're very welcome. I'm Patricia, by the way, Patricia Simon Hart. So any questions for Dr. Ogan um, based on the message? Any clarifications? Okay. Or anybody would like to say something? Okay. Okay. So we have um, a number of breakout rooms because we have people from all over the world. Um, we have um, we have a number of of uh, rooms. Um, not manually. We have. I've got the breakout room. Okay. Um, I had set them up. I'm not seeing them. One sixty eight, forty two, forty five. They've been done already, so I had, okay. So it's broken them down, even though I had the rooms, I don't know why it's changed it. Um, I had already set up these rooms and it seems it's changed it. So maybe, okay, so that's not gonna work. Um, I don't know, Cynthia, this is not working this time because the rooms I set up don't seem to be there. I set up like um, rooms per, per nation, um, so we could have, different nations in different rooms, um, but that doesn't seem to work. You can all unmute, uh, let me, so maybe it's my fault. So uh, people can unmute themselves now and open their videos as well. We did, you had your videos locked before, but now you can unmute and your videos can be open now so that we can see you and we can interact. Yeah. So what's the question? Ask the question. What does the facilitator do? So we can take... Mm -hmm. Um, Melissa, would you like to take that one? Okay, I'll, I'll attend. I could, I could um, start that question, respond to that question. Okay. Um, okay, facilitation is an opportunity to serve God in multiple different ways and his ministry in waiting women worldwide. Um, it's just not necessarily about providing monetary um, resources, but using the talents and um, the international that the Lord has called waiting women to do. And so, um, for example, perhaps feeding, um, supporting, and feeding um, the city um, project for the city of London. Why it could be doing something in your community, supporting your particular nation with a specific project or mandate. Resources for the work of the Lord is really what is about. Does that answer your question? They said it was too noisy. So, um, yeah, we didn't quite uh, yeah, because it was noisy. So, we have to mute everybody and then we're going to mute again. So sorry, Cynthia. We're going to mute. Okay. Not, a, not a problem. You need to, you need to unmute, um, Cynthia. Unmute. Okay. Okay. Great. Could everybody, hopefully, everybody can hear me now. 
Um, the opportunity to be a facilitator in Wailing Women is an opportunity to serve God in, I would say, a unique fashion. Uh, we're all called to do something for the work of the Lord, but being a facilitator is really utilizing the resources, the skills, your time, your talent for specific projects, works, and assignment that Wailing Women are called to do. So it may be um, an international project, it may be a national project, it may be a project within your state or community. So as facilitators, we support the work. Uh, we support not only financially or in time and talents, but we support in prayer. We come together to pray for our leaders. We pray for the projects that God has put in our hands. We pray for the protection and, and safety of those that are called to do specific assignments. And so Wailing Women Facilitators, uh, again, is an opportunity, um, I feel like no other, to be able to really serve God especially in this season and this time. And so no gift, no talent, no resource, no service is too small. Whatever we do into the Lord is what's important. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, you have the ability to unmute. So there's another question. You can go ahead, unmute and um, ask the question. Okay. It sounds like we're not able to um, hear the, the comment or question. Is it possible for you to write um, in the chat? so we can see the question in order to be able to respond to it. Okay, if you have a question, you can raise your hand or um, I think that's the best thing, then we'll unmute you. Are there any other questions? Doesn't look like there are any other questions. Okay. Um, if there are no questions, I would just like to make some, some comments. Um, this is a great opportunity for us to um, reach out to so many different people that are hurting. The, the message by Dr. Ogan today was spot on. It was something that we all needed to hear but think about all the people that did not hear it. And so as we go forth with the bomb of Gilead in the coming months, let us make, we wanna make an appeal now to tell somebody else, tell somebody who may not be familiar with Wailing Women or the work of the facilitation to come and join us and listen in as other future um, sessions are being planned, it will address, they will address the needs of women, of families, in this time and season. And so we just wanna be mindful of what God is doing. We wanna make sure that for all of us that he is speaking into our lives and he is touching us that we don't keep that to ourselves. And so there's a great opportunity. The, the Lord is, is waiting for us, the men, women, children of God to do great works in this season. And so we don't want to fall short with um, and disappoint him. The last thing we want to do is disappoint our father who's been just so gracious and so good to us on so many different levels. And so as you continue to participate in the Bama Gilead, the monthly sessions, as you talk to other people, just say, hey, there's an opportunity, there's a place to, to go and be encouraged to see women from all walks of life who have all types of experience just really want to sow into and be fed from each other. So we are encouraged by the work. We thank God for everyone that had a part to play um, in this session today. And we thank you for joining us. We know that there are different time frames. You're coming from all around the world. And we just want to say thank you. We thank you for all that you are doing. Uh, I think somebody's Somebody's asking a question. They're saying, please, what was the verse in Jeremiah? 
Okay, there were several verses in Jeremiah. I was taking notes as he was talking. And so he ended with Jeremiah 30, um, chapter 30, verse 16 and 17. And it talked about his adversaries going into captivity. He also mentioned Jeremiah 39 and 11. And I believe that one talked about your enemies will do no harm. So I don't have the specific reference for that. So Jeremiah 39, chapter 39, 11 and 12, and Jeremiah chapter 30, 16 and 17. Thanks so much for that. Any other questions? There is another question somebody said, let's see. Okay, there's a question somewhere. Um, Jeremiah 46, 11, somebody posted. Um, okay. Thank you for saying that. Any other questions? You can put your hand up or we can, um, or you can type the question, whichever is easier for you. We will be having um, a more detailed information session um, on what Wailing Women is all about. I'm sure some people might be wondering what Wailing Women is all about and um, some more in-depth um, look at what we as facilitators do uh, globally or in our localities. Somebody else has posted Jeremiah 8, 2022. Um, somebody's asking, what is the seventh principle in Esther? I think this question is probably for Dr. Ogan. Dr. Ogan, um, I'm going to ask you to answer. What's the seventh principle in Esther? In Ruth. Um, I'm sure the person meant to say in Ruth. Yes, in Ruth. Yes, sir. In Ruth. The Ruth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there, were, there were seven principles of how to appropriate the balm of Gilead. And the scripture is Ruth 1, 16 to 17. Entreat me not to leave you or to stop from following after you. For where you go, I'll go. Where you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. Where you die, I'll die. And where you're buried, I'll be buried. Then verse 17. God do so to me if anything but death separates me and you. The first principle, where you go, I'll go movement. The second principle, where you lodge, I'll lodge habitation. The third principle, where you, your people shall be my people. That has to do with citizenship. Hmm. The fourth principle, your God shall be my God, that has to do with conversion. The fifth principle, where you die, I'll die. That has to do with death in the context of crucifixion. Where you are buried, I'll be buried. That has to do with identifying with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That has to do with baptism in that context. Then the seventh principle is God do so to me if anything but death separates me and you. That has a self-imposed curse. And this is vital, a self-imposed curse. You know, curses are naturally bad, but there are certain self-imposed curses that are good. Hmm. Ruth was saying, if I don't go where you go, if I don't lodge where you lodge, if your people are not my people, if your God is not my God, then I leave you, except it is death that is separating us. You know, it's a deep commitment. A very deep, a self-imposed curse. You know, sometimes when we take our vows of marriage, we forget that it's actually a self-imposed curse. Not curse in the negative sense, but in the positive. You said, for better, for worse, until death do us part. With this ring I do wear, and with all my worldly goods I do endow. You're making a commitment. 
But in this particular sense, it's not even a marital vow. It's extra marital because it is death that separated Ruth from her husband. But here she was making a commitment to her mother-in-law, but ultimately to God, saying that if I ever leave you, may the blessings of God not abide with me. You know, it's a deep commitment, a self-imposed cause. God do so to me. God take away my life. God don't bless me. If I ever refuse to do what I have said I will do. So is a self-imposed a self-imposed curse in that team. It is a commitment to the day I stop loving you, may God stop blessing me. That is a self-imposed curse. But it is not negative, but it is positive. Thank you very much, Dr. Ogan. That was very clear. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Wow, we've still got Dr. Ogan. It's a privilege to have him here for so long. We really appreciate your time and your patience with us as well. Any more questions, please? Okay. Somebody's asking, what is the significance of river Euphrates? Is it fruitfulness? That was the question. Dr. Ogan, to you again. Did, did you get it, Dr. Ogan? They asked, what is the significance of river Euphrates? Is it fruitfulness? Is that which makes fruitful? Yes, that's, that's the meaning of Euphrates. That which makes fruitful. And again, if that which makes fruitful is inside me, it means, therefore, that barrenness has no place in my life. Even when there's barrenness all around me, there is the river that makes fruitful. And you know, that river is actually symbolic of the Spirit of God. He is the Spirit of conception. So it's the Spirit of fruitfulness. And our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But that Spirit is the river of that which makes fruitful. So Euphrates is that which makes fruitful. Thank you very much. Okay, there seems to be another question. What are the names of the rivers, please? Now, the first one, the rivers are in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to verse 14. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 to verse 14. The first river is called Pishon. P-I-S-H-I-O-N. Pishon. It means free-flowing. Now, free flowing simply by implication means freedom. Is the river of freedom. Is the river of freedom. And you notice currently this protest, even though we're praying that the protest, the racial, uh, the protest against racism in America, in Europe, in UK, in Paris, we're praying that they are not hijacked. But actually, it is the activation of the river of that river of liberty. If you notice, if you notice, Israel was supposed to be in bondage for 400 years because they didn't activate this river for 430 years. But the original mandate for their enslavement was for 400 years. And in our own context, amazingly, the first slave ship left Africa and landed the Americas in 1619. That was the time the first slave ship landed in America, the Americas, 1619. From 1619 to 2019 is exactly 400 years. So it is not surprising that in this season of our 400 years, that the staring up for greater freedom. My own prayer is that this ever be hijacked by the enemy. So the first river is Pishon, the river of freedom. Then the second one is Gihon. Gihon. G-I-H-O-N. And you notice this river is actually in the area called Ethiopia, Africa. I have been to Ethiopia and I stayed in a hotel called Gihon. It is the river of 
the, the, the original meaning is busting forth, busting forth. And it's the river of energy, energy. Then the third river is Hedikel. Now that river is also called Tigris. That's the second name for Hedikel. It is the river of rapid results. And there's no better time to actually activate the river of rapid results because the Lord says a quick work I'll do in the end time. I'll do a quick work. So this is the time you can do in a short time what others could not do in a long time. So the timeline for accomplishing tasks is shortened by those who will activate the river of a rapid result. So in this... Oh dear. I don't know what's happened here. I think I... I try to miss it because we didn't. I'm really sorry. I tried to put people in breakout rooms and then it has. Um... Oh dear, how do I cancel it now? Um... I'm so sorry, I think I put people in breakout rooms um, accidentally. Uh, and I have to... I know, this is me. Um, okay. How do I cancel? I'm so sorry, I'm trying to cancel breakout rooms. Okay, I think they've been canceled now. Is everybody back? Is everybody back here? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I was trying something and uh, so I'm really sorry, Dr. Ogan. Um, that was my fault. Um, I'm muting you now so you can continue. If you can unmute. So sorry for disrupting the session. Dr. Ogan, over to you. I hope everybody's back. So sorry. Doctor, oh, no, it's okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So uh, as I was saying, as, as I was saying, the new Adam, Christ himself, the Redeemer, says that out of our inner man shall flow rivers. I have been tremendously blessed by activating these rivers at different times especially when I go into the bathroom to take a bath. In fact, I've said before that the bathroom is actually an altar. It's an altar of revelation. It's an altar of restoration. It's an altar of sanctification. It's also an altar of revival. When I enter into the bathroom, I activate these rivers, but I don't have to enter into the bathroom to activate the rivers, but more so in the bathroom because I notice. There's a spirit of praise and worship that, that comes to you when you enter the bathroom. It's because it's an altar. You activate those rivers. I have been healed more times in the bathroom than outside because water is the witness. You know, the Bible says that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit. I'm quoting 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And then verse 8 says, there are three that bear record, that bear witness on earth. And the three that bear witness on earth is the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So whenever there is water, the spirit of God is there. The blood of Jesus is there. And no human being actually is uh, just made with flesh. 78% of every human body is made up of water. Of course, blood contains water. These things are things that God has given to us. And sincerely, I like everyone to appropriate this balm of Gilead, which is already inside you. The only way you can get a miracle is if you put what you have learned into practice. And that's why I think 
that these four rivers as you have given them and trusting God that God will give us testimonies. Remember, Gilead means heap of stones, but it also means heap of testimonies. So I'm expecting that testimonies will come out of this session as you activate the balm of Gilead inside you. Yes, and Dr. Ogan has a, actually has a book on breakthrough in the bathroom. I have, that, I have a copy of that book. It's actually very interesting. Um, I've read that book. Um, yeah, breakthrough in the bathroom is available on our website, but it's also available on Amazon. It, it's published in UK by Author House. So if you go on Amazon and you check breakthrough in the bathroom, you will see breakthrough in the bathroom. And uh, it, it gives us a, a more extensive revelation of, of, uh, of the springs inside us. But just a final word. I had a, 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 an encounter last year in the city of Abba. Some of our sisters will know the city I'm talking about. It's close to Port Harcourt. Last year, I went to minister in a CPM church. And unusual, as I began to speak in that church, I read off my original message and began to boast about God. Uh, thank God I wasn't boasting about myself. I was boasting about God. Uh, Jeremiah himself said, let the rich man not boast about his riches. Let the mighty man not boast about his might. Let the wise man not boast about his wisdom. If you need to boast, boast that you know me, that I am a God that exercising loving kindness. So by the leading of the spirit that began to boast about God, how powerful, how awesome, how loving, how, how gracious, how merciful. And in the midst of my boasting in that service, a child died in church. And it, the church was full with a gallery. The mother of the dead child ran hysterically with that dead child to the altar where I was speaking. And of course, I was confused. I didn't know what to do. In fact, boasting ended. But as I listened to the Spirit of God, the Lord said to me, first ask the ushers to take away the mother. Because she was hysterical. Who will not be hysterical? She was screaming. Who will not scream? You see, sometimes people go through challenges. And as I ask the ushers, take her out of the church, take her far away from the church. I was listening to the Spirit of God. What do I do? I remember I heard the Spirit of God say, send for a bottle of water that is not yet open. So they brought me a bottle of water. The child was on the floor. And then I said, Lord, what do I do with this water? It was at that time the Spirit of God reminded me, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 and verse 8. There are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So in other words, if you have any consecrated water, the Spirit of God is there, the blood is there. So I asked them to give me a spoon because by this time, the teeth of the child had glued. So we used the spoon to open the, the teeth. And I said, Lord, what then do I do? And the Spirit of God said, pour the water into the mouth of the child. It was, it, um, and this was happening in open church. So as I listened, I poured the first drop, nothing happened. I poured the second drop, nothing still happened. I waited, then I heard three, three that bear witness, three that bear witness. And I heard this, but remember, Elijah, when he lay on the child of the widow of the Zarephath, he lay three times, and then the child sneezed and woke up. So I poured the third one. By the time I poured the third time, the child began to gulp the water. And we poured, I poured all the bottle into the child, and the child revived. So these things are mysteries in the word of God. And I believe that as we appropriate them, God will also give us breakthroughs. As I said, many times when I am confused, 
I go into the bathroom, not just to clean my body physically. Uh, I don't take it, uh, it's not as if outside the bathroom you can't get a revelation. But the truth is that when you look at scripture, the very first element that the Holy Spirit came upon in Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 3 was water. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the Holy Spirit hovered on water, then creation began. God said, let there be light, and there was a light. The key point is that everything you do with these things, go back to the word of God. Once it is in the word of God, appropriate it, activate it, apply it. Because ultimately, it is by the Spirit of God. And I trust God that God will give us a heap of testimonies as we continue to uh, fellowship at the altar of the Bank of Gilead. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Ogan. Any other? Okay, there's another one. Is, is there another question? Um, okay. There is, somebody said, Euphrates, that which makes fruitful. This this is inside us all, no place for barrenness. I think she was just reiterating what you had told us. Um, any other questions before we close? Um, Cynthia, do you want to take over again? You're muted, Cynthia, you're muted. All right, thank you. All right, um, are there any other questions? Um, this is a great opportunity. Again, we've had a, a great session today. A lot of information has been shared. Um, a lot of inspirational information from the word of God has been given. So last call for any burning questions or comments that you may have for any of the speakers. And the question? Yeah, somebody is asking, um, is there any recording available? We are recording, so we will try and circulate it, just that the files are, are rather large. Um, if you're on our platform, we normally post them to our platform, um, our Willing Women Facilitators platform, um, but we'll try and get the videos out. We'll, share, we'll try and share them. Okay, uh, yeah. Anyone else? Nope. Okay, well, seeing no other comments, we want to thank you. Um, uh, there is a question from Dr. Sama from the U.S. Um, is there any information on the presentations available? Um, some people are asking about information on, okay, so we have a website. Yes. Um, we have a website. Let me just post it there so people know. It's www.facilitators.org. So it's not www. It's Wailing Women Worldwide Facilitators.org. So it's W, so it's HTTPS or HTTPS mm -hmm. dot hash hash, um, www.facilitators.org. So if you just type in on your URL, www.facilitators.org, it'll lead you to our website. There you can actually um, find the form to register. And once you register, your email goes in, um, and then we'll be able to um, send you information. And you can also make a request there as well. You can also, if there's any request, you can put in your request there, um, and we'll get back to you on that. Um, or if you know who invited you, um, some people might not know. If you do, do know, then um, you, can, you can also contact them. We also have our, um, our email. Um, maybe I should have put my, the email up there as well. So our email is, um, it's uh, www as well, www.facilitators, gmail. Gmail.com. Gmail. It's, I think it's in your, your mail that was sent to you. So if you check the, mail, the confirmation mails for this, um, this program, uh, you'll see it there, um, and you'll be able to, to respond to that email if you, if you send it to us and ask us um, whatever you want. But that's the email address, www.facilitators at gmail.com. Um, that, that is it. Uh, Dr. Ogan also has his own Facebook page. 
Uh, you can follow him on Facebook. He's there, Dr. Sitchidan. And he has he usually has these kind of messages going on a lot um, all the time. So um, that's available. Um, I think we already told you about the conference. Um, so back to you, Cynthia. Okay, our okay. Our final um, comment is that for anyone that's interested in learning more about um, becoming a facilitator or facilitation with Wailing Women Worldwide, we ask that you just leave your name and let us know that you're interested in the comment box and um, the team will get back to you. So again, if you wanna learn more specific to what it means to be a facilitator in Wailing Women, just drop us a note in the chat box and we'll reach back out to you. Someone from the team will reach out to you. All right. Um, I think that's it. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I believe that's, that's all. Again, thank you for your time. <laughs> um, we pray that it was blessed from the comments. It seems like people really enjoyed it. And so as we go, um, as we often do, we just want to, um, oh, there is one question. Uh, did you see that, Sister Pat? It says, is facilitation for women only? <laughs> I, I saw that just before it left the screen. I think in Wailing. We do have um, <laughs> Wailing husband. Yeah, we have, what are they called? <laughs> <laughs> glow. I want that glow. Men glow, yes. God was doing in the lives of, of their wives, they decided to set up um, an arm, just a facilitating arm within Wailing Women called Men of Glow. So we have Men of Glow, um, and they're very, a very strong Wailing yeah. Women. Um, so yes, we do. They're, they facilitate the work, and they're a really, uh, really, really great pillar within this work to hold up this work and progress the work. So yeah, it's there. So if you send us, send us, uh, send us a message, and we'll send you to the Men of Glow. Um, that group. Um, but, <laughs> <That's one thing. laughs> yes. Okay. yes, they are. <laughs> All right. Well, th thanks everybody again. If there are no other questions, um, we just want to go ahead and share the grace and the fellowship as we often do. So, May the grace of our Lord and Savior Amen. Love everybody. Love you. Australian. Stay safe. I love everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. 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 Hi everyone. Well done. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Sorry, my I think I can't open my video, but it's all good. <laughs> Bye, mommy. <laughs> well, job, sisters. Keep it up. The Lord bless you. Lord Thank bless you. you. Bless you. Thank you. I used to not. Let me see. Where is she? Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Right. I heard. Thank you. Mommy, I saw you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Patricia. Great meeting as always. <laughs> yes. I'm I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Seems I'm, I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. We sure did. I look, we look forward to many, many Mama more. Mama Mira, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> so we have the next.
We'll have the next okay. meeting in September for those who are asking. Some people still asking. You, Okoli, you're asking about the next meeting. Will we organize another one? We'll organize another one in September, but before then, we might have a we'll have a facilitators training session for those new people who want to join to tell you more about whaling women, to tell you more about facilitating team globally and what we're doing in our various localities and together as a team. So that's going to go on. But our conference is the next big thing. We have our whaling women's conference. We have many ministers, um, just like Dr. Steve Ogan, that will minister there. It's not something that you should miss. It's going to be online. Watch it anywhere. So, um, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, fellowship. Hey, Rose, how are you? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Sister Mew. Good to see you. <laughs> I see you there. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for coming and joining. We thank God it went. Uh, Hi everyone. Hi, hi everyone. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry that hi. It went so well. It's fine. I was truly blessed. Hope, Roslyn. Hopefully next time. Hi, Sister Muriel. God bless yes. you. Really thanks. Hey, Mama. God bless. Thank you. Oh, thank Sister you. Minister, that was a wonderful testimony. Yes. Oh, we thank you. Yes. Glory. 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 Okay, I don't know what's happening with my screen. Oh. God bless you. Job well done. With all grace. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. That was a Bye. So good. Bye. God bless you. Bless you all. See you next time. Thank you. Well, Bye. Bye. The next Bye. Uh, conference on the second. Uh, that should be amazing. Sonia, can't you open your... We didn't hear you say you can't open your video. I don't know what's going on. Or maybe... I, I, could, I couldn't. You couldn't? I don't I know. Couldn't, I couldn't open my video. I don't know what happened today with the controls. It was really funny. Really funny. Maybe how I said it in the beginning it was a bit uh, funny. So, there as, the time, as, the time, as time goes on, we we'll get, um, we'll get there. We we'll get perfect. Yes, yeah, so each time we just, yeah, we're just trying to see, you know, each time to get a little better. God is helping us. We will. So, Stuchina is there. Sister, has Choma Amado gone? She's gone. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So, All right. Okay, thank you so much again and again for being and for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. God bless you all. Bye.